No, but you do have your nice little fish on yours, and I have a... Yeah, because mine's from Our Coffee Limited in Boonesboro of Lynchburg, Virginia. Yeah, you always get those fancy clothes I from do. Our Coffee Limited. It's Rick and James know how to set me up, man. Yeah, and, and oh man, you ought to hear Rick James sing. No, no, no. <laughs> Wrong Rick James. Oh. It's kind of funny, though. I wish I could think of a song that Rick James sings. He didn't. Uh, yeah, he, he sung. No, he just yeah. he just did like the top forty. No, Rick James was a singer. He was a, like a DJ. Hey Siri, play play me a Rick James song. That's the Rick James I'm talking about. I still don't recognize him. So I'll super freak, word. super freak, super freak. She's super freaky. Well, see, that's what I'm thinking of every time we talk about Rick and James. I'm thinking about Rick James. Now I can think Super Freak because I couldn't think of songs oh, that he sung. Yeah, okay. So Our Coffee Limited, man, they're a super <laughs> freaky store. And they've got cool, cool apparel. I can't afford stuff like that. I get, I've got stuff from uh, Kohl's. It's Chaps. It's really nice, but it's... Mine's, mine's GQ. Yours is GW. GW. Goodwill. Goodwill. <laughs> Goodwill. They have good clothes. Yeah, they do. I've been there. Oh, uh, hey, so Rick James, if you're out there, man, write us write us a tune for our for the beginning of our show. Or bring you a shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or or Rick and James. Man, I can't afford anything more than chaps. <laughs> Hey everybody, I am Chuck Rogers and my very good friend Keith Dunn and together we are Tabletop Coffee and tonight we are going to talk about how to deal with difficult people. Oh, that's that's a tough subject. Yeah. Everybody has people that are difficult that, or they find difficult to be around. Do you know any difficult people? No, you know... <laughs> The thing I find difficult with people is when they wear clothes that are similar to mine. Because you really did tonight, oh, didn't I? It's something. It's a good thing you got stripes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll I'll be stripes. You be solid. At least we're not playing shirts and skins. That's true. Ooh, that, that would be bad. That would not be the pretty. People would click off the channel. Yeah, they would. It'd be bad. Um, so I understand. Everybody has people that are difficult to talk to or difficult to stay around for, you know, a length of time. Maybe they're abrasive or, you know, make you feel bad about yourself. Everybody has them. You right. Know? And then the question comes up of, you know, what do you do? All right. How do you deal with it? Or do you deal with it? And if so, you know, what do you do? You either have to decide that, you know, this relational problem is going on, so we have to deal with it in a cognitive way of letting it roll off so that it doesn't bother you. Or mm. you have to deal with it in an interpersonal way, which is to intervene and maybe make a difference. So on the cognitive side, when you're talking about it rolling off of you, you're just continuing things pretty much the way that they mm. are going, but you're putting yourself in a place where you can deal with it and not let it affect just you. Just not let it bother you. Hopefully. Okay. Right. That's tough to do. Because yeah, some would people be tough. continue to be difficult and they continue to be difficult over time. It's like, well, it's not so bad I can deal with it. Well, it's not so bad I can deal with it. But, you know, a one pound weight is not very heavy. But if you continue to hold it there, after a while your arm begins to burn and eventually you, you have to drop it because you just can't sustain that. There's some relationships are heavy that way that you can kind of put up with it. But if they continue to be in your life and continue to be in your life and continue to be in your life... It eventually gets, gets heavy. Oh, this is heavy. There's that word again, heavy. Mm. So what we do is we um, talk about um, different ways of looking at it. I was thinking about a gentleman my wife told me about, Kim told me about, Dr. Cha-Cha. That's, okay. that's actually the dude's name. I think yeah. he was from South Africa. And he had a cool accent. And he says, you know, people are like mathematics. You know, you see like a quadrant. He said, sometimes there are just some people in your life who really add to you mm. and they just make you larger right just by being around them and their presence or um, maybe they just speak life into you do great things for you so they add to you and there are some people who just really multiply you 
Okay. And just being around and being in their presence or the life that they speak into you just exponentially makes you larger. Okay. And then he says there are some people who subtract from you. Yeah. They do nothing but take away. Right. And then there are some people who divide. Okay. When I heard that, yeah. I was like, wow. Man, what a great way to look at that because mm. I can, I definitely can think of people that would fit in each <laughs> one of those quadrants. Yeah, I think we all can. Yeah. If you're going to have people in your life who are in the minus side and in the divide side, then you better have least equal amounts of people in the plus and the, and the, and the multiply side or right. more. Sure. Or you're going to be lopsided. Yeah, it's and, kind of empty in your cup. Yeah. It's kind of like any other relationship, but then you're taking that across multiple relationships and you need to have some that fill the cup if you're going to deal with people who are taking stuff out. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's let's uh, bring up our magic whiteboard. Oh, I love the magic whiteboard. We need a song that goes with it. Well, that. there's one on Captain Kangaroo. Okay. Do you know my name is Simon? And the things I draw come true. Oh, riches, take me, take me over. Oh, I'm the ladder with you. Um, he would draw things. And Mike Myers used to make fun of him. He would say, well, Do you like my drawings? His drawings? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. My name is Simon. I like to do drawings. When my clients come in, they want to look at relational issues. I kind of set up three boxes. And the first box is uh, kind of do nothing. Mm. Because most of the time, most people, when they're talking about relational issues, just end up deciding to do nothing and to stay exactly as it is right and when you argue the point well why shouldn't they they're still here they're still functioning they get up they go to work come home have dinner go to sleep get up go you know right their, their life is working it's painful sometimes having certain people in it sure but you know it's it's working and it's just too difficult to interpersonally intervene in the relationships so most of the time most people choose to do nothing yeah i can see that the second one is they can they can cut the relationship completely off. Who? Where, you know, there's just sometimes some people decide that some relationships are so heavy yeah. and so toxic, they're so allergic to the relationship that whenever they're around them, they break out into bad mental health. Yeah. Or, you know, bad physical health. We talked about during the dance. Right. That when one person has contempt for another one, that it's a major predictor of medical illness. Okay. Uh, I remember like us talking about that. Four to six years, that. somewhere in there. So sometimes right. you just, your, your life just um, needs to be shed. So even though it's, it's probably a really, really difficult process to go through that initial cutoff phase mm-hmm. over time, that can be a beneficial strategy if, if the relationship is just really toxic. Yeah, yeah. that's very extreme. So sure it is. I'm hoping that folks don't go out of here and say, you know, Chuck and Keith said they cut people out of my life <laughs> so, and relationships. So talking about that, are there times when you might cut somebody off, but you only do it for a set amount of time or, you, you know, you limit that and mm-hmm. maybe months later or even a year later, I'm not sure what the time span would be, you decide to try it again um, I mean, is there? Yeah, a time? sometimes, sometimes people will um, decide that I'm going to cut this relationship off, and maybe it will be permanent. Hmm. Or sometimes they'll cut it off for it's it, I, intending to be permanent, but right. maybe they'll decide later on to give it a whirl again, try it and see. Sometimes they'll sit out and, and, and from the onset, will determine that it's going to be for sure. Now we'll see about later. We'll see about six months. We'll see about a year. Okay. So it just depends on the situation. Some folks, most people don't, but some folks will decide that they've just been there, bought several t-shirts, and they just don't have any more room in their closet or more t-shirts that are like, I just can't have this person in my life anymore. If you're looking at a personal relationship and you get to that point where you're just, you just, 
don't want to feel that weight anymore. You don't want to mm. feel bad. So you're at that point and you decide, okay, I am going to cut this relationship off. It's, it's just got to be done. And you're willing to go to that person and mm -hmm. say, I love you or I, I really do care about you and I would love to keep this relationship intact, but it just can't work for me because you stress me out so bad. Mm -hmm. The thing, the words that you say, the things that you do, whatever, whatever it yeah. is, is just too much of a weight and I can't have that anxiety in my life. It affects me too deeply. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to sever this relationship and whatever you come up with at that point. You know, I would think for a lot of people, if they have a good heart in them at all, it's going to trigger something to where they sit back and maybe they had no idea that they were being that way. Maybe. And that could turn the entire relationship. Yeah. So just the willingness it's a, to it's cut a, off. It's a, it's a technique. It's a domino to tip to see yeah. what might happen. You know how bad it feels now. You're right. Well... It, it can't feel any worse. No, and if you're going to cut it off anyway, what does it really matter? Yeah, I mean, my, it's the last domino to tell. My dad used to say, where are you going to go, hell number two? Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, if it, if it feels so bad now, can it feel worse to, to try something different? Sure. And it can be a very large domino to tip to say, mm. the relationship with you is so heavy, I just can't be in relationship with you. I love you. I care about you. All right. I just can't be in relationship with you. That can be power, a powerful motivator for people to change. So that is the end of part one of this two-part series on how to deal with difficult people. Tell you what, that is an interesting way of dealing with that process. And, yeah. you know, I think of different situations that I've been in that I have used that. I've just never really known that it was a, a method to use to get out of situations. But boy, I tell you, there are times when you need to use this. Yeah, you do. See how good you are? You're using it and didn't even know. Yeah, I, I, I was already good. I was already good with this. But a lot of people aren't. A lot of people, I think, are really scared yeah, I think so. to leave, you know, whatever what you've been doing situation. to try something different yeah exactly yeah. so we hope this has been beneficial mm -hmm. next week get ready for part two because we're going to go in and fill in all the blanks and finish this up yeah so if you like our content make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified of future videos as they come out and like it and please like it share it with your friends thanks y'all until next time